Hello everyone, I'm going to go over um, your Zoom settings. In the event that we have to go virtual, it's best that you make sure your Zoom settings are set properly. That way you have more control over your Zoom meetings and you are more protected. So this only works in the Zoom website. It will not work in the app. So what you'll have to do is go to the Zoom website and then in the top right, you'll see sign in and then you want to sign in with Google. I've already signed in here. Uh, the reason you want to use Google and use your school account is that you get access to all the free Zoom features that they have provided because of COVID-19. So once you've logged in, uh, you'll need to make sure you're in your settings on that left-hand side. And when you come here, it'll automatically take you to the meeting. Some of you might've already gotten into Zoom and changed your settings to the way that you want them. And that's fine. I just want to make sure we cover and go over what I think is essential for you to host online Zoom meetings with your students. So first here, you're going to have security. Zoom has changed their policies. You see there in the uh, yellow that uh, because of the new security guidelines that you have to have several of these features uh, already turned on. As you can see by that, the meeting passcode, uh, the personal meeting ID, and um, required passcode for participants is automatically turned on by default. So what you won't have turned on is the waiting room. Uh, the waiting room is a place for when students join. It keeps them held there, and then you have to be manually added to the course. Uh, I suggest turning this feature on. Uh, this gives you more control over who is entering your room. Do you make sure that your students are in there, only your students are there, and just gives you a little more control. Scrolling down, um, the next thing you'll, I wanna go over is the approved or block entry list. So by default, it's off. Uh, what you wanna do is turn this on and then it automatically select only allow users from selected country and regions. And then you just type in the United States and hit save. Once you do this, it makes sure that only someone whose IP address is originating from the United States is allowed to join your meeting. This will help keep out anyone that if your code were to be accidentally shared, um, students texting it to one another or whatever, only students in the United States will be allowed to join. You don't have to worry about any type of uh, foreign interference. In the event that you have a kid that is not in the United States, for whatever reason, we can uh, you can adjust that by just going back in and adding that additional country. Next uh, is your scheduled meetings. So I recommend that, especially for the purposes of taking attendance and knowing who is there, that you, as soon as they join, you force their video to be on and your video on, your video comes on too. I, I think it is something that the students need to see you and you need to be able to see them. So just make sure both of those are on. Uh, turn off, allow students or participants to join before the host. You don't want anyone in the meeting before you. Uh, and a, your personal meeting ID is the meeting ID that Zoom assigns to you that is on by default. Uh, you can choose to use that when uh, you schedule, when you're scheduling a meeting ahead of time. Uh, I think it's easier because that's not going to change. So it's something that they can instantly join to and possibly memorize. Uh, I just think that keeps everything uh, flowing in a, in a better direction. Um, Insta meetings are like, if you go to the, let me pull it up here, the Zoom page here, if you were just to tap new meeting, it's going to start an Insta meeting. So that's not going to be something scheduled in advance. That's what that means uh, going back to uh, the web browser here. Um, you can go ahead and turn that on too. Big thing here, mute all participants when they join. You do not want a hundred people joining and they just start talking. Please enable that feature. This, as soon as they join, it'll automatically turn their video on and mute their mic and it's quiet. You'll have full control at that point in time. And we'll go over some different settings here in a minute to where you can enable students to unmute themselves or you have to unmute them. Um, 
And uh, the reason you might want to do that is, for instance, if you want them to focus predominantly in asking questions in the chat, then that would be a good feature to enable. Uh, and I'll go over that when I get to it. Um, upcoming meeting reminders just lets you know ahead of time that, hey, uh, you have a meeting starting. Uh, the chat. I believe it is important that you enable the chat. However, there's several features here that we can look at. Uh, I know a lot of times when you have a chat room, especially with students, they can end up doing a lot of talking and not a lot of learning. Uh, so it's best to keep that in mind. So by default, you can allow, choose how you want them, that they can uh, talk to anyone, they can only talk to the host, uh, or they cannot talk at all. I say you enable it, and uh, by default, you only allow them to chat with you. Uh, you do want to allow them to save anything they t uh, talk about. Um, they can save the chats. I would turn off uh, private chat here. That way they are only talking directly to you and not to a bunch of different people. Then you want to auto save the chat. That way you have a record of everything that is said. Uh, it's best just to have that backup copy then um, of everything that's going on, then to forget it and you might forget a question a student asked that you're gonna address later. Uh, just gives you a record. Uh, sound notification when someone joins, I would leave it off, especially in the event you have someone who has internet that's not stable and they're bouncing in and out because of the internet connectivity. That is gonna be miserable listening to that ding every time they leave and rejoin. Um, sending files in the meeting, you can choose to allow that and allow anything, or you can uh, allow a specific file type I would just leave it on, that way it allows them to send you links, documents, and photos um, compared to just um, limiting what they might be able to send you because it might be a lot easier for them to screenshot something instead of typing something out in a document. Uh, let's see, uh, screen sharing. Um, who can share their screen? So if you have host only, that means you can host you can share your screen, but you would still have the ability to allow them, you can click their name and allow them to share their screen. Um, I think it's best that you keep this the way it is. That way you don't have a bunch of people trying to share their screen, whether it's by accident or on purpose, and it doesn't disturb uh, any learning. Um, annotations, uh, you can leave that on, the, leave the whiteboard on. Zoom has a built-in whiteboard. We'll go over the features in Zoom itself. Uh, we'll cover that, but I would, I would leave all this on. Um, leave on the remote control. Uh, meeting reactions, so there are several reactions people can have. Uh, you can either choose to allow all emoji, emojis or uh, the selected emojis. Uh, I would allow selected emojis, that way you don't have kids just spamming a bunch of emojis and you really having no idea what they mean. Uh, so just leave that there. Uh, you can choose to allow removed uh, participants to rejoin. I would leave, uh, I would turn that on just in case you accidentally kick someone who was supposed to be in there. Let's say they were using their uh, parents device instead of their device and it popped up as a parent name and you kicked them because you didn't want the parent in there and then uh, it turns out that that was the student so you might want to uh, leave that option on do not allow participants to rename themselves you will have every name in the book popping up during your meeting uh, I would hide the participant icons uh, the profile pictures again you have no idea what you might get when you have that on. All right, in the advanced settings, uh, you can uh, report to Zoom, that's on by default. Here's the big one I wanna talk about and that's the breakout room. If you want to do group work inside of Zoom, you have to have this feature on. 
And what the breakout rooms are is it allows you to, and I would definitely select allow host uh, to assign the participants beforehand. So let's say you have an assignment that you want group work in, have these options on, and then whenever you go, you're ready to go, let's say 10 minutes into your Zoom, you wanna go into your breakout meetings, you hit that, and it instantly creates those breakout rooms for you, and it assigns those students in there. So they can only interact with their group. However, you can choose which group to join. So you could spend 10 minutes with this group, switch, let them work, go 10 minutes to this group, switch. Uh, you'll have more control when you have that on. Uh, let's see. Uh, closed captioning, you can allow that um, on, which it'll show up the best it can um, to identify what is, is being said. Uh, let's keep going. The virtual background, um, that just creates you, whether it's your school's logo or you want to act like you're on the beach while on the Zoom, that option's there. Uh, let's see. Um, you can turn on identifying guest participants. Uh, join from browser option, just in case the app is not working. You keep going. Um, request permission to unmute. They have to request the permission. They cannot do it themselves. Another uh, important feature. Um, the others are email notifications. Here is one that I want to uh, spend a little bit of time on. Uh, the blur snapshot on ios app switcher so if they were to try to for instance uh you see how my zoom in the bottom right corner how it's blurred like that if they were try to take a screenshot of something while in a different app it won't allow them so that just keeps them in their focus in the app so when you're in the app you could screenshot and not be an issue but if you try to let's say get out of it and go into something else it's blurred so that's why I say uh, I keep that option on as well. I know I went through a lot of information um, in these settings, uh, but if you scroll back to the top, I wanna go over uh, the recording settings. Uh, so in recording, you want to allow local recordings. Uh, and this also gives them an option for them to record uh, the meeting as well. So I highly suggest turning that on uh, that gives you, when I go over the Zoom itself, uh, this gives you the option to choose where you want that file to be saved. So you don't have to go looking for it later. Um, turn on recording, automatically recording. That way you don't ever have to worry about hitting it yourself. It's doing it instantly. Um, you want to play the uh, voice prompt that's pretty much gonna tell everyone as they join the meeting that this meeting is being recorded. So they know ahead of time that by joining the meeting that it is being recorded. Um, uh, you can also turning on uh, multiple notifications so they hear it multiple times throughout. I think the one uh, time it, it is sufficient as soon as they join. And that's also going to include like if they were to get kicked out and had to rejoin, it'll give them the message again. Uh, these settings, I believe are extremely important for your success in running this class. This gives you the most options and uh, customization of your class to run it the best way possible. That also keeps you protected and keeps the students protected and keeps you organized and focused solely on teaching and less on trying to figure out uh, Zoom and is it working, is it not working. Uh, if you have any questions on going over Zoom settings, feel free to contact us at the tech department and we'll get with you. Thank you.